All right, good afternoon, everyone, and welcome to our October workshop. Um, every year we have our special needs um, and learning disabilities consultant do a workshop. Um, you know, believe it or not, we have a nice percentage of families that have students uh, with some level of, of learning disabilities or challenges. And so always uh, getting this workshop completed is a plus for all of our families who need this um, support. So we will get started on that in just a moment. So if you don't know, I am Angela Fafali Nyako. I am the owner and director of this Homeschool Association, a united community of Homeschoolers Unlimited. I've been serving the South Carolina community of homeschoolers for 10 years this year. Next year, we'll be going into our 11th year in 2025. I am a homeschool mom of eight children. Now it's been 24 years homeschooling. My oldest is 28, so I started when she was four. And um, so I've been doing this a while. And as I tell people, I talk to newbies or they've been doing it for a while or as long as I have, every year is different. So while we, you know, when you've been doing it for 24 years, you know some tricks of the trade and you understand the process and not to get anal about things and, you know, stressed out. But every year is new. It's just like a new, you know, start of homeschooling. Um, so if you all have ever have any questions at any time throughout the year, you're welcome to contact us and um, either by phone, email or text. OK, we make ourselves available to assist you as needed. All right. So that's um, just a little introduction of this. Um, as I mentioned, a United Community of Homeschoolers Unlimited, we are a community. And we support all, the whole, um, those who desire to home educate their own children, okay? Um, the one announcement I want to make you aware of is tomorrow we do have a, a monthly virtual mastermind meeting. And this is for the, the entire um, uh, uh, community of AUCHU, okay? So we will be talking about the laws that the do's and don'ts and understanding your freedoms of homeschooling under option three. Okay, so that is tomorrow. Um, a reminder will go out to you uh, for that meeting as well. For this recording today with Hope uh, Benjamin Cole, I always have to think, you know, I always literally think B and C because she they told me that is remember A, B, C, B, C. So uh, Hope Benjamin Cole, this meeting with uh with them today, we will record it. It's being recorded, so you can expect this to come out in your inbox shortly, okay? All right, uh, let's go ahead and get started. Let me give our introduction to our special needs and learning disability consultant, Hope Benjamin Cole. So Hope Cole is the special needs liaison for AUCHU, and this workshop that she is giving uh, is pertinent to those families who have children with learning disabilities and those who don't. So it's, again, it's for the whole community. Hope is the parent of two children with special needs and learning disabilities, including autism, ADHD, dysgraphia, and dyscalculia. Hope has been homeschooling and coaching for over 15 years and has led multiple co-ops classes and groups for kids with special needs and learning disabilities during that time. Now, Hope's workshop, this workshop will include practical information like diploma options and answers to questions about what documentations you need, uh, you need when homeschooling a special needs student. They will also share some about their own homeschooling journey. While this workshop is geared towards families, homeschooling children with special needs and learning disabilities, there is truly information in it that will benefit every homeschooling family. So Hope will be talking about how to customize, customize any curriculum, how to create a comfortable and sensory-friendly learning environment, and how to adapt 
our teaching styles for the different learning styles of our students, okay? So without further uh, delay or ado, we will now give time for Hope to share. Welcome, Hope. Thank you. Hi, my name is Hope, and I'm the parent of two amazing kids with special needs. So my oldest is now in college. She has autism, auditory processing disorder, which is a neurological disorder affecting the way she processes sound, ADHD or attention deficit hyperactivity disorder, dysgraphia, which is a learning disability to do with handwriting, dyscalculia, which is a learning disability in math, and mental health issues, including anxiety and depression. My youngest is in 11th grade and has OCD, which is obsessive compulsive disorder, ADHD, and dyscalculia. When I first started homeschooling my kids 15 plus years ago, I had an expectation of what it would look like. Work boxes were big on Pinterest and were touted as terrific for kids with autism. You prepared little individual activity boxes with their subject matter for the day, their math work box, their science work box, their reading work box, and they take it off the shelf, complete the work box, and that would be their school day. Easy peasy. Oh, I worked so hard on those work boxes. I carefully curated projects, cut out crafts, arranged manipulatives, stocked them with the recommended balance of learning and fun. I mean, they were Pinterest perfect. Yeah, my kids took one look at them and wanted nothing to do with them. If any of you ever work so hard to make a homeschooling subject or activity fun or interesting, and then your kids ever so kindly let you know that that was not their preferred method of learning? Being new to homeschooling, I did what any new teacher would do. I insisted they do it my way. So naturally, school ended in tantrums and tears on a daily basis. Initially, I was afraid to give us permission to do things on our own timetable, even though if you asked me, I would have told you from the beginning that one of our top reasons for homeschooling was to allow our kids to work at their own pace. It turns out that allowing our kids to work at their own pace is a very hard thing to do in practice, isn't it? We feel the pressure of the public school timetable looming down over us. Must be reading by age five. Must know multiplication tables by third grade. Must write a five paragraph essay by fifth grade. Also, my kids didn't meet any of those deadlines and they're doing just fine now in 11th grade in college. What I learned teaching kids with multiple and extreme special needs, leading classes and co-ops for kids with extreme special needs is that there are no educational emergencies. Life has emergencies, education does not. It is never an emergency situation to teach reading or multiplication. Algebra is not a crisis. Work boxes are not imperative. If our kids are in tears doing school, it's our cue to stop, take a break, and reassess the situation. Because homeschooling, homeschooling is the fun stuff. Homeschooling is the reward. School shouldn't be the stuff our kids dread or something we need to battle with our kids to do. The beauty is homeschooling is fluid and flexible. We can change our curriculum, change our environment, or change our teaching methods until we get to the place where our homeschool is a playboy. More on that in just a bit. One second, I just lost my place. Let's talk first about homeschooling documentation with special needs. Do we need any additional documentation beyond our basic state requirements when we're homeschooling with special needs? No, we do not. We don't need to file any extra paperwork. We don't have to notify the state, the school district, or even our homeschooling association when we're homeschooling with special needs. What diploma options are there? Keep in mind that any homeschooling diploma issued by the homeschooling parent or homeschooling association is not a state certified diploma. However, most colleges, universities, and employers do recognize homeschooling diplomas. Our kids can earn a certificate of attendance, 
This is a diploma that states they've attended all the required days, which in South Carolina is 180 calendar days per year. This is a modified diploma, and it's a good option for children with intellectual disabilities. They can also earn an academic diploma. This diploma is what we call a typical diploma. It has between 22 and 24 credits, depending on what state you live in. In South Carolina, it has 24 credits, but you can have more credits if you wish. Typically, it would have accompanying transcripts with this diploma. In our association, Angela will complete our official high school transcripts as part of our membership fee. She sends out the link annually in our newsletter. You can also earn a technical degree. This is the second type of modified diploma. This is a diploma after a work study program or an apprenticeship for learning a skill or trade, health sciences or hospitality, hospitality or tourism. There are two pieces of documentation you hear non-homeschoolers talk about when they have kids with special needs. The first is a 504 plan. Do we as homeschoolers need a 504 plan? What is a 504 plan? A 504 plan is a plan provided for students in educational institutions receiving federal dollars. And it's based on section 504 of federal law that states students with disabilities have access to an equitable learning environment. So no, we do not use 504 plans in a typical homeschool environment because we do not receive federal dollars to educate our children. You also hear about IEPs. That stands for Individualized Educational Plans. Do we need an IEP to homeschool? Technically, no. Remember again that there's no additional paperwork required to homeschool. And homeschooling is itself an individualized educational plan. Since we're creating a customized curriculum for each of our children when we're homeschooled, when we homeschool. However, I do highly recommend keeping a list of the accommodations you have in place for your special needs child. And I recommend you update this accommodations list each year. This accommodations list is an important piece of documentation if you ever transfer schools or if you're ever out of commission and someone needs to take over teaching for you temporarily. I had back surgery and the kids accommodations list was invaluable to our substitute teacher. I also highly recommend that senior year, you write up a formal IEP to put with your child's transcripts. Most colleges, universities and trade schools will take students' senior IEP into consideration. And yes, they absolutely take homeschool IEs. You can have a homeschool IEP with any of the diploma options, and you do not need an official diagnosis. However, getting a letter from a doctor, even your family doctor, that lists their diagnoses and lists their accommodations, such as Student Jack has benefited greatly from having the following accommodations in place in school. One, two, three. Or student Jane has the following diagnoses. Um, ADHD and anxiety and has benefited greatly from having the following accommodations in place. One, two, three. Letters like that can add a lot of weight to your homeschool IEP. I help families write accommodations lists, homeschool IEPs, and sample letters for their doctors to sign. So if you're doing this for the first time or you need assistance, I offer free consultation calls. You can text or email me to make an appointment or just message me on Discord. One of the biggest things I see with families I'm meeting with for the first time is they have a tendency to hold their child back a grade or two. If I do grade placement assessment, we most often end up placing the child in the grade they chronologically belong in. I want to encourage you to keep your child matched up with the grade they chronologically belong in. If you're doing any type of modified diploma, a certificate of attendance or a trade degree, you should absolutely keep your child matched up with the grade they chronologically belong in. You are, however, free to homeschool your child past the age of 18. You can do that with a modified diploma, even with an uh, academic diploma. You do what's best for your child's well-being. 
In South Carolina, kids must graduate before they turn 22. In other words, they can attend school up until the age of 21. Again, if you're working towards an academic diploma, still I wanna keep you, I wanna encourage you to keep your child matched up with the grade they chronologically belong in. I see parents worrying when their child is using workbooks, one, two, sometimes three levels below where they quote, belong. That's okay. Maybe your fourth grader is doing first grade math, second grade reading, fourth grade social studies, fifth grade art, fourth grade science, and fifth grade music. And those are their six subjects. I would place that child in fourth grade. Remember, even in public school, the kids have different reading and math levels. Remember that we are homeschooling so that our children can learn at their own pace in their own way. And remember that we no longer need to compare our child's progress to anyone. There is no one for our child to fall behind. Falling behind isn't a thing that can happen in a homeschooling setting because who would we fall behind? We can trust that our child is going to get all the basic knowledge learned by the end of high school. Will they have learned all the things by the end of high school? Did you learn all the things by the end of high school? No, of course not. Do we stop learning at age 18? Did you keep learning new words, new facts, new pieces of history? Yes, yes, and yes. Your child will too. Our goal isn't to teach our children all of the information because that's an impossible task, but rather how and where to find the information and how to critically examine that information. We want to grow curious people and critical thinkers and lifelong learners. It isn't any measure of homeschooling success if your child is reading at age five. It's a measure of homeschooling success if they're reading at age 35. Moreover, even bigger than all the academics, we're teaching our kids to be good citizens. If we teach that, all the rest will fall into place. We may want our kids to have a job, a home, a family, but really we want our kids to be secure and happy. How do we teach them to attain that really? Academics or good citizenship? At the end of the day, we invest in our kids' well-being and family values over investing in their workbook level or what test scores they're getting. That's why we're homeschooling, because we can focus on what really matters. If you're worried that your child is several workbook levels behind because of an undiagnosed learning disability, well, then that's when it's time to make an appointment with me and I can do screening questions with the parents. And if the screening indicates it, then we can talk about how to access testing, and where to go from there. Another big thing I hear from parents is that their child doesn't want to do school. I hear this in many ways. Their child refuses to do their work, tantrums during a certain subject, their child won't get off video games, every sentence or problem is a battle. Does any of this sound familiar? Our kids are trying to tell us something when they behave this way. They're communicating with us. What are they trying to say? They're saying that number one, the curriculum needs to change. Number two, the learning environment needs to change. Or number three, the teaching method needs to change. Or all three. So let's look at number one, changing the curriculum. While there's no special curriculum for special needs, we can customize any curriculum using accommodations and modifications. An accommodation accommodates the student so they can learn the material exactly as it is. A modification modifies the curriculum so the student learns a modified version of the material. If you're working towards an academic diploma, you need to be careful how many modifications you use because they're altering the amount of curriculum you're teaching. You can use modifications, but just be careful how many you use. So let's look at some common modifications. Examples would be to give only a portion of the problem. 
say the assignment has 20 math problems, you maybe modify the assignment down to 13 problems. Another modification would be to allow your child to write an outline instead of paragraph form when asked to do an essay. Or you could have a word bank of answers for multiple choice questions. Those would be examples of modifications. Accommodations can be used as often as liberally as you please. One of the best accommodations we can give is extra time, allowing kids to take as much time as they need on assignments. No hurrying, no rushing, no timers. Another accommodation is frequent breaks. How often does your kid need a break? As often as they need them. Start by making your homeschooling day a reasonable length. My rule of thumb is that your homeschooling day shouldn't last more than one hour for early elementary school, two hours for late elementary school, three hours for middle school, and four hours for high school. Maybe your kid needs much shorter days. That's okay. Do what your child needs and then take frequent breaks, both scheduled breaks and as needed breaks. You cannot teach a saturated child. It's pointless. If your child has learned all they're physically, emotionally, and mentally capable of learning that day, then they're saturated. You know a saturated child when you see them. Slumping over, whiny, teary, can't focus, wiggly, argumentative, doesn't want to engage even when you know what's something they love doing. Saturated. It's okay to stop at that point. And it's okay to count that day towards your 180 days of learning, even if it was a short day. Teaching happened, learning happened. Even if you didn't get through everything you had planned, that day most definitely counts. Accommodations can be things like how you arrange your subject. For short focused lessons are often best with younger kids and kids with special needs. I'm talking 15 minutes per subject. Trust me, short focus lessons are highly effective when teaching kids with special needs or learning disabilities. Accommodating the length of the subject so that you're teaching the same amount of material in short focus lessons is a great option for some kids. I love using YouTube for this or other video media lessons. You may find your homeschool runs best with short focus lessons, which gives you lots of variety, or you may find your homeschool runs best doing one subject a day. Um, arrange your subjects however works best for you. Other accommodations can be things like marking your texts with highlighters, using graph paper to line up your math problems, allowing your kids to give their answers however is easiest for them, orally or in writing, you can act as their scribe when they're writing so that they are the author of their work and you are the transcriptionist. This is a great option for kids with dysgraphia or dyslexia or any child who needs an opportunity to focus on content over grammar and punctuation. So those are ways we can change the curriculum. Now, how can we change the environment? Creating a sensory friendly environment is essential for learning. We can bring in a cozy blanket or a pillow. We can let the kiddo work on the sofa, the floor, outdoors, in a park. We can have special gel pens or colored pencils or fancy paper that's only used during school. Both my kids' least favorite subject was math. During math, I had a tea light holder and a long-handled candle snuffer to put candles out with. And at the beginning of the subject, I supervised them with a lighter and they lit a tea light and they put it in the little ceramic dish. And a little while later, when the candle was melty, their math time was over and they could mm -hmm. snuff out the candle. I tell you, kids love candles. They love candles. Mm -hmm. Math became a subject they almost look forward to because of the ritual of lighting and snuffing out the candle. With this ritual, they were self-monitoring their time, they were in control of the subject, and the battles to do work on paper stopped. Another accommodation is having a pet join you. Pets are a great part of homeschooling. We can also have snacks during school. Let your kids munch during school. So that's how we can change the curriculum. And that's how we can change the environment. Now, how can we change our teaching method? 
Uh, one of the ways we can change our teaching method is to adapt our teaching style to our kids' learning style. There are three primary learning styles, auditory, visual, and kinesthetic. Auditory learners. This is a child who learns best by listening and speaking. Characteristics of auditory learners can be a good memory, strong listening skills, enjoy conversations, talkative, and distracted by background noise. Some ways we can adapt our teaching style to the style of auditory learners would be recording lessons, watching videos, using audio, audio tapes, and having them give responses to answers orally. A visual learner is a child who learns best with visual media. Characteristics of visual learners include, they may prefer to learn through demonstrations or descriptions, but they often have well-developed imaginations and think in pictures. Visual learners may be good at interpreting visual information and spelling, and they may have difficulty with reading comprehension, writing, and math word problems. Some ways we can adapt our teaching style to the style of visual learners would be to include activities like graphs, tables, charts, maps, and diagrams. A kinesthetic learner is a child who learns best with movement and tactile input. Characteristics, they may move around a lot while studying. They may learn best by touching and doing things physically. They may be good at sports, dance, and other physical activities. They may use expressive body language, such as hand gestures. They may have difficulty staying attentive. Some ways we can adapt our teaching style to the style of kinesthetic learners, uh, building models, outdoor education, manipulatives, role-playing, and computer games. Kids with special needs tend to be whole body learners. What do I mean by that? These are kids whose learning style requires all three types of input, visual, auditory, and kinesthetic. Not necessarily all at once, but they need a variety of sensory stimulation in their education in order for the information to sink in, especially when trying to process new information or directions. They need to hear the directions, see the directions, and act out or pantomime the directions. And then after receiving the information three ways, it's more likely that the information will be successfully processed. For example, when learning the alphabet, we can have the child tracing the letters and reading an alphabet book and getting that visual input, singing the alphabet song and getting that auditory input, and then we can make a letter hopscotch and we can jump from one letter to the next and get that information through movement so we can get that kinesthetic input. <clears throat> when learning multiplication tables, we can use arrays and look for patterns to get that information visually. We can use videos and flashcards to get that auditory input. And then we can use games, hopscotch, manipulatives for kinesthetic input. We want not just one way, but we want always mixing things up in a variety of input when we're teaching a new concept to special needs kids. I found the best teaching method is to adapt to the child's interests. Kids pay attention to what they're interested in. So why use prefab plastic cubes as your math manipulatives when kiddo is obsessed with Legos? And so what if you start building during math? A Lego project can teach all the basic arithmetic, addition, subtraction, multiplication, division. It can teach perimeter, area, volume. Manipulatives can be Barbie dolls, animal figurines, giant pool noodles. History can be taught with YouTube videos or historical fiction. My kid's elementary school history program was taught with American Girl Doll series. Dolls, books, doll parties, projects found online, field trips. It was a blast, and to this day, history remains both of their top favorite subject. So those are ways we can change our teaching methods, and those are ways we can change uh, our curriculum, and those are ways we can change our environment. Will our kids enjoy every subject all the time? Well, is life perfect? No. But if we can 
teach our kids to enjoy one subject with us. If we can spark that curiosity and teach our kids to find that love of learning in one subject with us, then we have given our kids such a gift that they can take with them for the rest of our, their lives. Truly, if we take the battle out of just one subject and make one subject together with our children a place of joy, then we have truly given our kids such a gift. Lastly, I do want to leave you with something that I wrote in my first year of homeschooling special needs kid. At that point, I had a kiddo diagnosed with autism. I had another kid diagnosed with sensory processing disorder. I called this my homeschooling creed. And these were promises that I made to myself and my kids. These were things that I wanted for our homeschool. We will get outdoors and see our friends as often as we can all year round. We will have a learning lifestyle. I will keep my children by my side and include them in cleaning and cooking and budgeting and planning. I will not say I'm busy and tell them they can't help. I will answer their questions and give them a role and value their contributions. I will say yes more often and allow my children to rabbit hole at will and follow their interests. I will be mindful not to let my teaching get in the way of their learning. Hmm. I may not do this mothering teaching job perfectly, but I can do it better for my children than anyone else on the planet can. I've kept this pinned to my fridge for all these years, reminding me of my goals. And I can say that I'm pretty proud of how I've done with it. That last line, I may not do this mothering teaching job perfectly, but I can do it better for my children than anyone else on, on the planet. I, I have not done this perfectly, but I know that I've been the best teacher my kids could have ever had. Our kids are in the best learning environment with us because of us. Trust that. You've got this, parents. You are doing a great job. Are there any questions today, or does anybody want to share anything about how their homeschool is going or anything? So let me clarify, please, about the IEP. Yeah. You are you saying that we don't need one until high school? You don't need one ever. You don't need one oh, ever. Okay. However, what I'm I... saying is, um, senior uh, uh, most colleges, universities, and trade schools, if your child has special needs and it's going into college, they will accept um, a senior your senior IEP. And they will use those same accommodations in college. They will use those same accommodations in college. So if you have a nice, nicely written, you know, homeschool IEP, you can say, we had an IEP in our homeschool. And they will say, oh, okay, very well. Let me see your homeschool IEP. And they will take your homeschool IEP. And they'll say, yes, we have these accommodations in college. We can absolutely use these same accommodations in college. Oh, but if you, if you have a nicely written homeschool IEP that you can give them and they will use those same accommodations in, in college. Okay. I think so that's, it, I had sent you a message on this a piece of documentation. It helps to have a piece of documentation. Why? Because colleges are schooly, you know? Okay. Oh, yeah, I had no. sent you a message in Discord and that's what I wanted to ask you. If about yeah. the IEP. <laughs> yeah, no, you don't need it. You don't oh. ever need it. Legally, you don't I ever need, need anything. However, when you're transferring to a school, it helps to have a schooly piece of documentation. Just like you don't ever need transcripts. However, a college is going to ask for transcripts, you know? So let me ask you this for just for clarification. Uh, yes. 
say a family has come from public school and in the public school they had an IEP, uh, must they continue to follow that school's IEP once they begin homeschooling? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. When you are homeschooling, you do not to keep following the public school's IEP. A lot of times the public school's IEP was not working. And that's why families have left the public system. That public school IEP was not functioning well for their child, was not serving their child well. No, no, no. Do not feel that you need to keep using the public school's IEP. Once you are homeschooling, you are principal, guidance counselor, teacher, and school board. You are in charge of your child's education. You are in charge of your child's special education. You are in charge of the curriculum. You are in charge of what accommodations your child receives. You are in charge of all of it. Thank goodness. You are in charge of serving your child's needs. You are in charge. You no longer need to follow any of the public schools recommendations or rules no mm -hmm. no question yes as far as your 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 statement that you put on your refrigerator the the maybe 10 to 2 mm -hmm. um yes my question is going to be like i have a an eighth grader right who's mm -hmm. going to be going to high and how do i say it we do not that he's behind, but we are moving definitely in a much slower pace in some classes than we normally would have. But because it's he's going to high school, there's going to be a time frame and when that stuff has to be completed before he graduates. Is there ever a time frame or period to where you feel like you just have to get through this information? I know that you said that we're not going to learn everything in the textbook. I get it. You didn't learn it while you were in school, but at the I same know. time, you were that they're getting enough of the information so that, you know, I guess it'll benefit them in a sense. Yeah, I, I feel you. And I definitely felt some pressure when my child entered high school. I was like, oh my Lord, we need to learn algebra. We need to learn geography. We got to get biology. We got to get geometry. We need to get, I felt all that pressure. I felt all that pressure. And then I took a breath because we're homeschoolers. And I can make her transcript look however I wanted to make her transcript look. It's okay if her transcript doesn't look like a public school transcript. It's okay. It's okay if her transcript looks different. So her first year, uh, and we can title her classes however I wanted to title her classes. I called her class. Uh, I think I called her class pre-algebra because it was not algebra. It was, you know, like things that I was teaching her that was not quite algebra. It was mm -hmm. like before algebra classes, you know, it was not quite there, you know? So that's what we took ninth grade. It was okay. not quite algebra. And then... Um, and that's okay. I've also worked with families where we've done, um, consumer math. We've taken consumer math where they've like completely, um, diverted from taking the path of traditional academics. Their child was just not on that path at all. They were just not ready for algebra, geometry, they just were not ready for that at all. So they took consumer math and they learned budgeting, credit, banking, you know, household math and stuff mm -hmm. like that. They took consumer math for their math. There are all different kinds of maths you can learn. I have had families who were not ready to do biology or chemistry. And so they took astronomy and botany and animal science. And I mean, there are all kinds of different sciences you can learn. I mean, we are homeschoolers, we are creative. There is a world of sciences we can learn. There are a host of mathematics we can learn. There are 
so many different things our children can learn in order to meet their requirements. There are so many different things we can learn and it makes a wonderful and varied looking transcript. But for college, um, I guess my thinking forward four years for college, and I know the transcript has to align with what the college will require in order for you to be admitted. So but you my really want your child's uh, academics to look a certain way for college. So for right. college, depending on where they want to go to college, their academics do have to look a certain way for college. So you may want to have it I mean, look a certain way for college. So depending on where they will want to go to college, you may want to look at what their college wants them to take. Right. And I, I guess my question is more or less, I want to make sure, even though we're going off on our own path, um, that somewhat aligns with what the school, you know, traditional school has. I, my, my ultimate concern, I guess, is what's going to happen once he gets into the space of a college classroom. Yeah, well, my daughter's in community college right now and doing wonderfully. Oh, let me jump in on she's that. She's actually really, um, yeah, she's doing well ahead of her peers. How are your kids doing in college? Who went to college? Um, hold on, I want to I want to um, jump in real quick and add something to that too. Um, so Toria, just to, to let you know that um, one thing that we do, AUCHU, is that every January, we have what we call individualized homeschool graduation plans, meetings, okay? So those are no additional cost, but I would meet with you and your student to find out what is your goal? What, it, what, it, what are you trying to do? Do they want to go on to college? Are they looking for military? Are they looking to go to community college? And then we would talk about what classes would look would be good to try and conquer number one number two then we also look at your student where are they and their strengths academically and how can we uh, uh, shape or schedule the classes that quote unquote should be required should be completed if they're going on to college so that's something that we'll mm -hmm. do because it's individual so while mm -hmm. yes like Hope was saying, we don't want to feel this pressure of we got to get chemistry, physics, and this and that. Um, but depending on the goal of the student, then we'll talk together and, and map out what that could look like. Yeah. Even if you slow down the pace of learning, that's absolutely fine. We always have time on our hands. For the most part, we have time on our hands in homeschooling. We really do. <laughs> <laughs> we really do. We really do. We really do because we can, again, fashion the classes um, to be completed as needed with the time schedule that we have. But every January, starting uh, November, next month's newsletter, you'll see me advertise and put out information about scheduling your um, IH, um, individual homeschool graduation plan, okay, a meeting. So we'll talk through that. Even if they have learning disabilities or, or learning challenges, we still will map that out and see what will work best for your student because each student is different. Okay. There are also creative ways to, ways to get creative with curriculum and stuff like that. There are chemistry curriculums that you can do with apps. There are biology curriculums that you can do with apps. Not everything means a thick text book work apps like epps apps apps yeah like apps on your phone and like in based curriculums and you know like little um online labs and you know like to make learning a lot of fun mm. okay right now we're kind of at the rather than a biology curriculum that when you think when I was thinking biology originally, I was thinking biology, you know, a textbook this thick that yeah. my child was going to have to get through. Mm -hmm. Biology doesn't have to look like that necessarily. There are a lot of ways to teach biology. There are a lot of ways to teach chemistry. 
there are a lot of ways to teach these subjects. When you have kids who need accommodations, when you have kids who have special needs, there are a lot of ways to teach these subjects, you know? Okay. Mm -hmm. So don't allow yourself so, to come to any pressure. Um, I got exactly. Done. We're in the high school stretch. And so these things have to be completed. You know, don't do that to yourself. Just keep trekking along and yeah, let's yeah. meet in January and have discussion. Yeah. 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 Um, okay, so, go ahead. Yeah, go ahead, Tony, Toria. I, I was just going to say, like, my son, for the most part, is a self learner. I can just kind of give him the work, and he just kind of he does it, and he can get it. But, and I know that he can tell it back to me on what was actually taught, but I don't really know that it's really sticking. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Like you're it but it's just like okay I guess maybe because he's maybe not interested in it you know I'm gonna learn it because I have to get it but then that's just about it and I don't know if that's necessarily like a question but it's just like you kind of want him to always have it back there in the lost files for him to be able to bring it back up to the front to the you know and be able to tell it to you I just don't want us to kind of be going through the motions of okay let me just go ahead and get this work done because I know we got to get this work done yeah. So are you saying that you feel like he's not really engaged with the material? You feel like he's more just getting through it to get through it? Mm -hmm. But yeah. again, it's a lot of, um, I mean, we have watched a couple of like tutorials online, um, but for the most part, it's black and white, just the work in. Maybe that's what I need to do is just kind of maybe switch it up, maybe let him listen to something or, you know, Hands on, which we did start a little garden in the background. I mean, in the backyard. What's so that was you love doing. What's something <laughs> you love doing? What's something you're passionate about? What's something you're really good at doing? So, so for me, I love to read. Him, not so much. You know, I could read until the cows come home and be perfectly fine. And he would love to play basketball or be on the video game. <laughs> I'm thinking of what's something that you, what's like one of your hobbies? So reading is something you're good at. Do you cook? Do you sew? Do you draw? Do you incorporate cooking? One of his classes is culinary. So he gets into the kitchen. That's very uh, good. George doing the culinary. Yeah. yeah. I love that. See, that's very good. I love it when parents teach their children something that they themselves are very good at. Mm -hmm. If you are good at cooking, I love it for you to teach your child how to cook. No necessarily workbook or curriculum other than this is something I'm very good at and I'm going to teach you something and we're going to give you a credit as I teach you something that I'm good at. I also love when students teach their parent something that they're very good at. If your son is very good at basketball or very good at video games, I love it when he gets school credit for teaching you something that he is very good at. Now, what we do do, like as far as our PE class because he does train for basketball so we're doing basketball every single day and naturally I'm there you know helping him or whatever so I kind of use that along with like, like the strength training and stuff that we do for like his PE credit mm -hmm. I love that. you know so I mean we, we're kind of mixing it up and like I was telling someone a little while ago I mean it can really change from week to week <laughs> Yeah. on how you actually do things, you know? So, yeah. I love that. And let me add... And to keep operating things that. They're, they're great. Um, let me add just to, you know, as we homeschool, there are some subjects that are just black and white and our cre creativity <laughs> has to come in and to make it exciting. But sometimes I don't work hard to make all of their subjects exciting, you know? Um, is information I need to present. I want to present to you and make you knowledgeable of and just get the information. It's every day, and this is truthful for my homeschooling. Uh, there may be more creative homeschooling moms out there. But for me, some things is just, let's get through this subject of information and learning. 
And That's then what I'm saying. Will every homeschool subject be a source of joy? No, no, not every homeschool subject is a source of joy. But if we can have one subject, one thing, it sounds like cooking is joyful. PE is fun. I mean, you are knocking it out of the park. So let me ask this question. When is enough of one subject? Like, I know we have to school for 180 days, but when is there, and I say enough, but when do you consider a subject complete? And I'm not so much talking about like the electives, but like your core classes, like an English one or like an algebra one or something. When would you, when you're in traditional school, you're never going through the entire book, okay? But as far as us creating it ourselves and doing, you know, the basics and then leading up to more difficult work, when do you say, okay, well, that was enough algebra that was learned. So we're going to maybe move on to geometry now or algebra two or, you know, what have you. Mm, that's a good question. That's a very, very, very good question. Um, and the quick answer for that, because again, it's going to be individual, but the quick mm -hmm. answer is for, for that is, if it's algebra one and this is the subject that encompasses algebra one and you feel like are you if you're saying that you feel like we're done and we're tired of this subject um that's one or two we've learned plenty enough and now we're done so let me clarify which are you saying you all are tired of it and done ready to move on or we've learned plenty and now we can move on what what are you wondering no we're yeah, we're not tired. We have a lot long to go. I'm just saying, I was just wondering, because the way I had it in my mind was, okay, well, I'm going to model somewhat the, the schedule of the high school, like we're going to do a half semester and then another half semester and switch, you know, switch classes. But since we're in this, it's like, mm, we're moving a lot slower in math than I thought we would, you know, would be. So instead of rushing through assignments, I'm like, no, look, we're going to do this again today and do it again tomorrow until you get it, you know? So okay. at that point, I know that I'm not going to finish with math come December. I'll still be working into it, you know, for a long while. But when do I say enough is enough mm. of learning? Of learning algebra. Um, I'm not sure you have to make that decision of when enough is enough, but for, for us, for an example, so if I have a student that's not strong and really enjoying algebra, and I did algebra one and algebra two, we split it over two years. We split algebra oh. one over two years. So we went slower with it. Um, and I didn't know at the time my son was on the spectrum. I didn't find out till he was 19, but I was making accommodation just based on the energy, how it was going. It was a drudgery and he wasn't enjoying it. Um, he needed a small bite pieces, just a little bit each day or however I had to schedule bite. He's 26 now. But at that time, mm -hmm. that's how I did it. Algebra one was over two years. Algebra two was over two years. Um, and I did that for my number four child too. Algebra one over two years, algebra two over two years. Um, and so we didn't feel like we need to hurry up. Okay, you need to get these pages done because you need to have this book done in this many months, blah, blah, blah. No, we just slowed it down. And so he completed... He and she, uh, they completed, um, let's see, algebra one, algebra two, and we got into geometry. Um, algebra one, algebra two, and then we got into geometry. Now, geometry, I don't believe we finished the whole book of geometry, um, but majority of geometry was done. But that was the math those uh, two students of mine had, and it, it worked. My third one, I think, she, I think all of them did algebra one and algebra two. We and geometry, we never got into chemish, um, uh, um, yes. calculus, excuse me, calculus. And she went on to college, they went on to college, and they're they fine. Okay, when they're fine. So, okay, just use your mommy's spider senses, so to speak, and and realize if it's not working at this pace, let's just slow it down and make it work for them. You okay, know? yeah, I had one kiddo who worked on math year round like that little bite-sized chunks of math on a daily basis because they did better with a daily school schedule and they did better with school round year round 
I had another kiddo who absolutely needed a long kind of school break every year um, where it was like, I need no school for a couple months every year. And even though we didn't quite finish um, the, you know, the whole quite, you know, curriculum, I really felt that they had learned an adequate amount of the curriculum for me to can, to give them credit for that subject. They had learned a good enough chunk of the curriculum that I felt, yes, they they deserve credit for this subject. You know, they have they've got the gist of it. You know what I mean? They've they've learned their, you know, three quarters of the way through their you know, more than three quarters of the way through, they've learned an adequate amount of the subject. They've got a good grasp of the subject. They are not a hundred percent way through the subject, but this is not a child who can school year round. So I had kids do it differently and, um, mm -hmm. but both of them got a full credit for, for math. And, you know, you just individualize it based on what your child needs. You know best what your child needs. Correct. That's right. Yep. Um, I wanted you to hope to talk. Um, you mentioned about keeping a child match with chronicle age to grade. Why? Why is that important? I do feel like that is important. I feel like um, as homeschoolers, it's important for us to recognize that there is nobody for us to be falling behind. Um, that is really public school mentality for us to be falling behind somebody that our child is not at grade level, that our child needs to be held back and stuff like that. And that we need to, as homeschoolers, get into the mentality that it is okay for our child to be exactly with where they are, that our child is working at exactly the level they're supposed to be working at, and um, that, you know, that it is important to just accept uh where our child is at and accepts the full spectrum of that. It is completely normal for a child to be working one, two grade levels, three grade levels behind in several subjects, one, two, three grade levels ahead in certain subjects. That child is not delayed. That child is not advanced. That is the way a normal child's brain learns. That is normal learning for a child. Children's brains learn on a spectrum. Children's brains learn on a spectrum. It is not normal for a child to learn just on a third grade curriculum when a child is chronologically within 11 months of third grade. That is not the way a normal child's brain learns. That is not the way a normal child's brain learns. A child's brain learns all over the place. It is normal for a child's brain to learn uh, at multiple grade levels at one time. That is the way a normal child's brain learns. So let's, it's just really important to keep a child chronologically matched to the grade they belong in while we're homeschooling and just go ahead and let them learn at all different levels of curriculum. That is normal learning for a child. That's normal learning. That's normal learning for a child with or without special needs or learning disabilities. That's just normal learning for a child. That's normal learning. <laughs> yes, that's good. I wanted you to clarify that. Um, another, you know, some other thoughts to that, if in, anyone else want to chime in, is that, um, yeah, all of my kids have all been all over the place in different subjects to age. And you can ask my kids to this date, you know, what grade they're in. And they have to look at me and say, Mom, what grade am I in? <laughs> because we just, we just don't grade. focus yeah. on it. We just don't focus on it. And then what we really do focus on is these are the subjects now I've been doing this for a while. These are the subjects I want to make sure that you are, have, you know, completed. You've also had some freedom to enjoy things you wanted to learn. And once you've done the things that I know I want you to complete, then you're done. That could be at 15 or 16 or 17 um, mixed in with your maturity level. 
Um, so if they're at 17 and they are 15 and they're done and they're mature kids, they've covered the subjects I wanted them to do. They've enjoyed things that they wanted to do and they have a direction of where they're going to college, to a trade, whatever, then I would graduate them, especially if made, you know, they reach the credit, the, the credits that I, the minimum of 24 credits. I've done that with each child. So each child has graduated or finished schooling at different ages. Because I look at not just the adult subjects. Are you mature to be ready done? Are you mature to be done schooling? Do you have a plan? What what are you going to do when you're done? Because we're not going to sit at home all day and just play games, you know? So right. if not, then we're going to continue schooling. Um, so, you know, take that into consideration too as you're doing that age to grade because it may not even really matter. It just may, may matter that you, the, what matters is that you f don't feel like they are behind because our kids are never behind that's the big exactly thing. yeah that's the biggest thing we don't have these kids who are behind so any other questions for hope or comments or thoughts because uh we've reached our hour of time together but any more questions comments that you like to offer to hope okay well that was great um, hope very thorough as as always thank you very much for taking the time to spell that out if you all do have any questions hope let them know how they can reach out to you how they can contact you again uh the easiest way to get hold of me is right on our discord group um you can just message me on discord or you can, I have to look up my own phone number. How bad is that, everybody? You can call me at 864-749-0786. Or you can email me at hope at dandelionhomeschoolcoaching.com. Mm -hmm. Okay. And okay. you if you have any specific homeschool questions or things of that nature, option three things or help or support, you know, of course, reach out to us. Um, you have our numbers in the newsletter and on your membership package. Okay. So thanks for showing up. Thanks for being a part. And uh, we'll see you next time. So tomorrow, oh, let me tell you for tomorrow real quick, as promised, tomorrow's, um, let me get back there. I just closed it. Uh, tomorrow, we do have our first workshop virtual mastermind meeting is tomorrow, Thursday, uh, Friday, October. No, I'm sorry. Excuse me. It's next Thursday. Excuse me. Next Thursday, October 31st at 4 p.m. The topic is homeschool freedom and parental rights. What families need to know. Okay. So um, please join in there. I want to... Uh, dispel any things that are not clear, uh, what people think they're supposed to be doing in option three homeschooling, um, all of those kind of things would be dispelled uh, next Thursday at 4 p.m. Okay. All right. See you all. Thank you. Bye, everyone. Thanks. Bye-bye. Happy homeschooling.